Hello and welcome to Last Second Medicine channel. In this video, we will talk about hyperparathyroidism. As you know that there are four parathyroid glands located on the posterior aspect of thyroid gland, and parathyroid glands release parathyroid hormone, which has an important role in calcium and phosphate balance. Low ionized calcium level is a stimulus for the release of parathyroid hormone, which resultantly increases the level of calcium in the blood by increasing the both osteoclast activity and increase renal tubular calcium reabsorption and phosphate excretion in the urine. It also increases the activation of 25 hydroxy vitamin D in kidneys to 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. There are three types of hyperparathyroidism, primary, secondary and tertiary and I will discuss one by one all these three types. Primary hyperparathyroidism affects about 0.1% population and it is caused by parathyroid gland adenoma in most cases, but occasionally parathyroid hyperplasia and rarely carcinoma can be a cause of primary hyperparathyroidism. It may also be associated with hereditary syndrome, for example, multiple endocrine neoplasia. Primary hyperparathyroidism results in hypercalcemia and hypophosphatemia. Why hypophosphatemia? Because as mentioned earlier, parathyroid hormone increases phosphate excretion in urine. Now coming on to secondary hyperparathyroidism, hypocalcemia or hyperphosphatemia due to any reason, for example, renal parenchymal disease or vitamin D deficiency results in increased stimulation of parathyroid glands and this results in physiological compensatory hypertrophy of all parathyroid glands. As low calcium is stimulus for secondary hyperparathyroidism, so in this case you will find low calcium or low normal level of calcium. And what is tertiary hyperparathyroidism? As mentioned earlier in secondary hyperparathyroidism that low calcium and hyperphosphatemia is a stimulus for parathyroid hormone secretion. But if this stimulus persists for prolonged period of time, then there is autonomous parathyroid gland hyperplasia and in some cases development of parathyroid gland adenoma. In this case, plasma calcium and parathyroid hormone are both raised. In most of the cases, hyperparathyroidism is an accidental finding when you find raised calcium level on routine investigation and on further investigation, parathyroid hormone may also be found to be raised. You may come across the features of hypercalcemia like thirst, depressed mood, abdominal pain, polyuria, dehydration, and deranged renal functions. There may be bone pain, pathological fractures, or osteoporosis due to the increased osteoclast activity secondary to hyperparathyroidism. Raised blood pressure is also a sign resulting from hypercalcemia. So in all cases of hypertension, calcium level must be tested. Coming on to investigations, Hypercalcemia, hypophosphatemia, and raised alkaline phosphatase suggest primary hyperparathyroidism. But in cases of secondary hyperparathyroidism, you will find hypocalcemia. Since hypercalcemia and raised PTH may also be found in cases of familial hypocalceric hypercalcemia, so a 24-hour urinary calcium test is important to differentiate between these two conditions. In primary hyperparathyroidism, there will be hypercalciuria, while in the familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia, there will be hypocalciuria. TSH also shall be tested for hyperthyroidism. Ultrasound parathyroid glands will help in diagnosis by locating parathyroid adenoma. Or parathyroid nuclear scans like system AB scan shall be done for the location of adenoma. Coming on to treatment. In cases of primary hyperparathyroidism, symptomatic hypercalcemia shall be treated by improving the hydration of the patient. In some cases, steroids and biphosphonates may be needed. Sinacalcid increases the sensitivity of parathyroid gland to calcium and this results in reduced PTH secretion. Definitive treatment is surgical by removal of the adenoma or removal of all hyperplastic parathyroid glands. Complications of surgery include recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, post-op hypocalcemia due to increased osteoblastic activity and intake of calcium by the bone. This is known as hungry bone syndrome. And in some cases, there may be relapse of the hyperparathyroidism. 
secondary hyperparathyroidism is treated by the treatment of the cause like treatment of renal failure or replacement of vitamin D in cases of vitamin D deficiency. Phosphate binders in renal failure also helps in prevention and treatment of secondary hyperparathyroidism. And treatment of tertiary hyperparathyroidism is surgical removal of the parathyroid glands. I hope you liked this video. If so, share with your colleagues and subscribe to this channel.